Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you call him, he will answer. If you call my Lord, he will answer. If you call him, he will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Don't you know I'll be somewhere listening? I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Don't you know I'll be somewhere listening? I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Glory to God. Welcome to Fest Man of Ministries of Miracles. This is supposed to be Tuesday night. But it's Wednesday afternoon, hallelujah. I missed Tuesday. I got caught up in so many things. I kind of got lost. So I'm doing it tonight. Amen. So I'm still going to call it Tuesday evening Bible study. Hallelujah. I'm the elder Lee Anthony Smith. My wife is the pastor. Oh, yes, Michelle Ruth Smith. Our overseer is none other than the apostle Medina Ashley. We give glory to all leaders of the churches. We give Thank you to the officers who work so diligently to keep the church in order. And we thank the ones, oh yes, who are faithful to God, the saints. Continue your good works. Your works are not in vain. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you will, turn to Matthew 6 and 33. 6 and 33, this is our key scripture, and we're going to get into it in a second, but we just want you to know that if you have any prayer request, please send it to my email, smithleeanthony7, that's S-M-I-T-H-L-E-A-N-T-H-O-N-Y, numeral 7, at gmail.com, or you can DM Amen. And I'll get it that way. Elder Lee Anthony Smith, I'll be glad to pray on your behalf. If you want a phone call prayer, put the number there. I will get in touch with you. We just want to include it in our daily prayer, which we just had for Wednesday afternoon. We'll do it that way. You let me know what you want by way of prayer. We will do it. If you wish to cash at this ministry, dollar sign F M M M three zero six. We will pray over your offering that God will multiply your finances in the mighty name of Jesus. At this time, I pray that you are at our key scripture, Matthew 6 and 33. And it reads, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Title, holiness. I'm talking about one's character, the way you live, the way you treat others, the way you respect, the way you respond to things that are happening. Holiness, overwhelmingness. That's usually, I'm thinking wellness in the sense of evil, because everything in the world is not evil. I don't want to get that opinion, opinion going on. But the way you respond in wellness is usually of what it comes from the flesh. It's very against holiness. Very much against it. Hallelujah. In fact, the Bible says the flesh is always going against the spirit. So we want holiness to always be over worldliness. Let us pray and we will clear this up a little better as we go into our scriptures. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this prayer. We thank you for this Bible study. We thank you for the coming together, be it live or be it, Heavenly Father, by way of pre-recording. Let someone be blessed by this message that we have in this study, coming from Matthew 6 and 33, holiness over wellness. Let it be you and not me that give the word to your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Holiness 
overworldliness. Holiness, as I said earlier, we're talking about your character. If you got that holiness inside of you, you got Jesus-like. Jesus is a fine example of living holy. If you want to know how you should react in certain situations, see how Jesus responded. This will help you. And worldliness usually is when you let the flesh just take over and you do what comes natural. Mm -hmm. And this is why the world and holy are always at war. The holiness wants you to be in a characteristic of Jesus, which is kind, loving, caring, others before yourself. But the flesh, mm -mm, I got mine. You better go and get his. <laughs> Hallelujah. You bend that step on mine. So I know it's always me. I, we got Christians who are guilty of this. I don't even realize it. My church. Your church? What's me? Your church. <laughs> uh, I thought it was Christ's church. Amen. <laughs> but we won't get into that today. I hear a lot of them talk that way. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with wanting to support your church first. That's, you should. But it can't be this possessive where it's just mine. It is all for me. It is all about me and my people who go there. It's got to be about everyone because that's holiness. You don't just have that particular family. You don't just have a particular group or particular congregation. It is world. Amen. That worldly. <laughs> I didn't watch myself there. But it's of everything that exists in our society that makes you holy. The way you treat others in your church, you'll treat the ones who are not even better. That's true holiness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And if we look at our key verse, Matthew 6 and 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. I mean, seek out what is holy first. When, before you make a decision, think holiness. Is this what Jesus would do? Or is this something that I just want to do? Amen. And his righteousness, that's the thing that Jesus would do. His righteousness, what is correct? What did my God tell me to do? Hallelujah. And all these things, these things you pray for, these things that you desire, these things that you need, these, and, 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 and all things that you need are not worldly. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, y'all be careful about telling people this because people pray sometimes amiss. In other words, they're praying to God about things that's going to counteract holiness. Mm -hmm. But you, you, you pray, okay, here's a fine example, and I'm not picking on people who do this. And, you play the numbers. Okay. All right? Because you want to win easy money. Okay, fine. No arguments for me on that one. Hallelujah. But do you pay tithes? Do you give to the church? Do you give to the neighbor that's starving? Or do you just go play the numbers and you hope you win then you got more to go out and do what you want to do with? Here's an example of you not putting holiness over worldliness. You're putting the world first. Glory to God. So it goes on, and his righteousness, and all these things, things you pray for, shall be added unto you. These things can be added to you, the things that you pray for. That is of God. Don't pray amiss. In other words, don't pray to God on things that are not holy. Hallelujah. That's one thing we talk about one day in more detail. Right now, what I want to do to get to this title, Holiness Over Wellness, I want to give you five biblical scriptures and uh we'll see where in some cases where jesus had to make a decision on what to do and how holiness always prevailed and we'll see where the disciples did the same hallelujah so the first one matthew 17 and 27 and um we see it, this here is where peter jesus is at the temple and there's a tax that is being charged. Some people are saying, well, here's the son of God. Why should he have to pay taxes? I don't think he should have to pay. Hallelujah. But here Jesus did pay the tax. And let's see how he did it. It reads, Matthew 17 and 27. Notwithstanding, in other words, Put everything aside for a minute. You know Jesus is holy. Amen. But he's about to pay taxes. Not we stand in, lest we should offend them. Talking about the people who are collecting the taxes to come to this temple. He said, offend them. That's going against holiness. 
Uh, amen. Go down to the sea. Told Peter, go to the sea and cast and hook. You're going to fish for a minute, Peter. And take up the fish that first coming up. The first one that comes, grab it. Open, and it says, and when thou has opened his mouth, open up the mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. <laughs> there will be, they call it, it's, it's a Greek time, and I'm going to mess it up, uh, or Desmos, Desmos, okay, that's what you'll find. You'll find four, because they had to pay two apiece for this tax. Two for him, two for Peter. And he goes on to say, that take, take it, and give it unto them. Give it to these guys at the temple for me. I'm paying mine, and you paying yours. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And the problem with that, when many people say, well, okay, he came up with this Greek form of money. Did he just make it up? Because he did that. And we and one thing you learn, that's why people can make counterfeit money, because it goes against the currency is what is really av available in our country. And when someone makes counterfeit, it destroys the economy. Actually, we all get cheated. And this is what some people are saying, well, isn't that cheating the government? Hold on, it's hold on a minute. Amen. And, and, and they come up with the argument, well, uh, if, if, if it's not cheating the government, then did he take it from someone and put it in the fish mouth Do divine nature? Amen. Now, I want to pause there and say this about Jesus. Jesus had a choice here. He could, he, he, his, his word, his teaching was already there at that temple. They knew about Jesus. He probably didn't have to pay anything. But he didn't want to offend them. The first thing he said, we don't want to offend the God. He could have walked up and said, I'm Jesus. And they were like, come on in, Lord. <laughs> you come. He didn't do that. He got the money. Amen. Now we could go on and on. Did he get it from here or there? Or God just made it and all. Okay. You need to remember something. God is righteous. That means always correct. Holy. He lives a holy life at all times. There's no room for evilness. However, wherever, and this is the way I perceive it, it doesn't matter. Jesus paid with his life. For them same two guys who are collecting the money. If he got it from them, glory to God. <laughs> if he got it from Brother Smith in the future and send it back there, glory to God. Because he done more than gave me more than that in my life already when he died on the cross. So however you want to look at it, trust me, God is always justified. However he did, however the money got there. It is justified. And I have to leave it at that. I'm not going to try to get too long on that. But some people do argue that point. And the point to me, how much more did Jesus give us? Someone, if he did get it for someone, let's say for instance, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, they got it back more than what was taken. I promise you, it was taken but it was given back with more. But God always justifies. It could have been 15 more years added to their lives. I don't know. Amen. I know one thing. My God justifies. And I leave it at that. And I'm happy with that. All right. So there's a particular where holiness has to fight against, you know, should I pay this tax? Is it correct to pay this tax or not? He did. Not to offend the ones. They could have put them on the spot. And I'm Jesus. I'm the one I'm sure you heard about. Instead, he paid not only his, he paid for Peter by going and getting that fish and opening them up and getting the coins out of it and going and paid to them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus performed this miracle, and I'm reading this from Wikipedia, and they got some good things that they get from holy people, hallelujah, and they put it in Wikipedia. And this is one thing they wrote here about this particular scripture. Jesus performed this miracle in order to not offend those who collected the temple tax. This is the only miracle that Jesus performed in order to avoid offending people. Usually Jesus would come out here tell the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, all of these, uh, these other folks. He'll tell them about themselves. Here he didn't do it. 
Jesus typically performed miracles as well as made statements that were offensive to his audience, the Pharisees in particular, particularly the Jewish priesthood, who they are. Amen. Lest we, he used the term in the scripture, lest we offend them. We don't want to offend them. Let's just pay the taxes. Hallelujah. This piece of money today is probably equal to about a half a cent. <laughs> and he had so what, a penny a piece, two pennies from him and Peter. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Let's look at another one. Let's look at Romans 13 and 7. And I call this one, Give What is Old. Okay, and it reads this way, Romans 13 and 7. Render, therefore, to all their dues, tributes to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. We know this is Paul. Hallelujah. And he's telling them, give back what they give to you. If they give dues to you, and when you give back, you're doing yours in holiness because you're holy, because you're of Christ. We don't let someone come and they curse us out, and here we are now. We're going to curse back at them. We're not living holy. We're not broken it. Hallelujah. But we will respect them. If they're kind to us, we'll give kindness back. If they're mean to us, we will still treat them kindly. Jesus told his disciples, go out two at a time. If they don't accept you, leave your peace. Shake it off. He never said, start an argument. Well, you're going to go to hell because you didn't do this. And you're not living according to the life of Jesus. He didn't tell them to do that. Leave your peace. You leave in kindness. Leave it alone. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, so here... In uh, Romans 13, we see where Paul is telling them about holiness. You give holiness. If someone's being holy, you give it back to them. Give them back there. You, you treat them. And this is where that saying comes from. If you're in Rome, you do as the Romans do. This is where they get This is where some people get it from anyway. Hallelujah. Because this is what he's saying. He says, render therefore all their dues. If they give tributes, they give tributes back. If they have a custom, you, you do their custom. Fear to whom fear. If they fear, you fear to. Hallelujah. Honor to whom honor. But we got to remember as Christians, we have to keep it holy because we're going to put holiness always over worldliness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go ahead to the third one. There's only four. Acts 3 and 6. John displays Holiness. Hallelujah. Then Peter said, Peter and John actually, they display holiness. Then Peter said, silver and gold I have none, but such as I have, I give thee. Okay, I can stop there for a second. They're going to give what they do have. It isn't money. Money for the most part is worldliness. And they say, I don't have the pieces of silver and gold that I could give you, because this man was begging, and I understand he was lame, hallelujah, and he's had his arms out, you know, it's not the arm, but the A-L-M-S, it means asking for money, and Peter says, well, I can't give you what I don't have, but what I do have, <laughs> oh, hallelujah, that's the holiness I'll give to you freely, hallelujah, but since I have give ID, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the man walked. He walked up the stairs, ran down the stairs. He hopped all over the place. They gave it freely. Not for money, but for the love that's in them, which is holy. Holiness over worldliness. Hallelujah. The power of divine healing is worth more than any money that they could have given to that guy. Glory to God. All right, the fourth one, Mark 12, 44, no, 42 through 44. And I'll read this from the Amplified Version as well. This is the lady with the two mites. And, um, and it reads, verse 42, A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins. They're at the temple, and people giving in collections. And she gave just... Two 
copper coins, which apparently wasn't that much, which amount to a mite, which is probably like a penny, calling his disciples to him, this is Jesus, he said to them, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, this poor widow, talking about that lady who just gave the mites where these others was given plenty. He says this to them about this lady. Put in, that means proportionally, what she put in more than all the contributors to the treasury of God. Out of all of them out there who could put in maybe what may amount to a thousand dollars, a hundred dollars, whatever he's saying, this lady with the two mites put in more. And I'm sure they're like, no, should he put in two coppers? What are, you, what are you talking about? Hallelujah. Let's go ahead. 44. For they, talking about everyone else. All contributed from surplus. <laughs> they gave what they had left. Spare chains. It, the, a millionaire don't worry about a thousand dollars. If you're a true millionaire, a thousand dollars here and there don't bother you. It may bother me. <laughs> it would hurt me somewhere if I had to give a thousand because I had to scratch up to get it. But those who have that kind of money, it doesn't bother them. Hallelujah. Most of us, a dollar bill, a five dollar here, it won't hurt you. Hallelujah. So, this is what he's saying. They put from their surplus. This is what they got left. But she, talking about that widow who put in the two mites from her poverty, she's poor, put in all she had. Oh, hallelujah. There you go, right there. This is where he's making that distinction that holiness prevail over the worldliness. The world had surplus. They could give more. And they did. A lot of them did it boasting. Uh, here's my thousand. Uh, I'm going to pause there and I hope I won't offend any church or anything. I personally am so much against the money line. And I had a situation that came against me. Why? Do we have a money line? There's only one reason. To collect more money, and the way we do it, we intimidate. Are you going to sit there? Are you going to be on the $1 line when there's a $100 line over here? I'm so much against it. Because you don't know what that person's going through. Yeah, you can say, well, they don't have to get, well, they don't. But I had to sit there because my wife wanted to get on the money line when I let her. And I gave her, I think it was $100. She had 50 and I had 50 Amen. We, so I gave her my 50 That was all I had. At the, that means that seriously, that was it. So I sat there. And I'll never forget the looks. And I said to myself, well, I gave, but I guess I didn't give enough or whatever. It was a miserable feeling. And that's why I'm against that. You don't put on a show. If you're going to collect, you let people give. This lady just gave. And those who laughed, they couldn't laugh for Jesus said she gave more than all of them because what she gave, she gave it out of the holiness that she has. She gave out of the love. She was already in poverty. Two cents means a lot when you don't have anything. But she gave it because she loved God. Hallelujah. This is holiness over worldliness. She could have said, well, I need this two pin to buy some, some flour for bread. Buy some leaven, I think they used back then, whatever it is. But no, she gave it. And she gave it from the heart. She gave it out of love. She wasn't looking for any applause or anything, like many of them was doing. And, you know, <laughs> let me take my money up there. You know, bragging. She did what she did out of love, and Jesus made it so clear. He called his disciples over and said, look at here. That lady gave more than all of them. Put together. Because what she had came out of her true heart, her love for God. This is holiness over wellness. These are just four scriptures. But I'll tell you, we could, I could talk about the rich man, and there's so many more we could go on and bring some more, but I don't have, have to use four. I use those for, please, I beg you, I implore you today, as you go through life, choose holiness 
overwhelmingness. How do you do it? You get in your Bible. You see how Jesus lived. You see how Jesus, like he made that decision to go ahead and pay those uh, four dosmas that was for him and Peter to go inside the temple. Hallelujah. Many will say he shouldn't have to pay anything. He's the son of God. Uh, hallelujah. But he said, why offend these two men here? It's not worth it. We got to make decisions. Should I go here or I should be here or over there? You got to decide, God, where do you want me to go? When do you want me to go? These decisions, I have to go over with decisions. I think you know where I'm coming from. We always, I, I had to decide, I'm going to the granddaughter's birthday party, which is during church time on a Sunday. Or I'm going to the church service. I'm not preaching anything. I just want to go. I said I was going. I told him I'll be there. I went to the church service. We have to decide what is holy and what isn't. And we have to decide that we're going to stay on the side of holiness and all that we do. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. Amen. I thank God for this message today. I pray that it was a blessing to you as it is for me. In closing, we discussed several scriptures about how holiness won over worldliness. Go out today. You always got to make decisions. And, and as you get used to it, you realize holiness is a way of living. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to regurgitate these scriptures. You just know what is right because it becomes a part of you. That is what we're working for when we say we're reaching for the high calling. We're reaching to live the holiness in all that we do at all times. I pray today that this has been a blessing to you. Bless someone else with it, if you will. Tell them to come on the prayer line. Tell them to come on the page here. You know, let them hear this message. It may be a blessing for them. We always pray for that. If all hearts and minds are clear, we'll close out. But we'll be back next Tuesday with another message in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we pray as we go through our daily doings that we do it in holiness. We forgive, not because we're supposed to, but because it's in us. Holiness is such a part of our lives. We don't have to think about it. We do it. Like we breathe, because it's so much a part of us. I pray for each and every one who says amen, that they will go out and live holiness, overworldliness, and all that they do. Be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all have a blessed rest of this week. In the name of Jesus, once again, next Tuesday, we will see you again on Fresh Man of Prayer page on YouTube and on Fresh Man of Ministries of Miracle prayer page on Facebook. May God bless you dearly. Amen.